shall be a day of service. He inspired us in words, but he led us in deeds. To honor him, let's do the same. Go to mlkday.gov and find out how to volunteer on Martin Luther King Day and beyond. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and To the final segment of the show for today, we're talking to members of the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, uh, Pastor Walker, uh, Ms. Pritchard, and Mr. Goldsbury. Uh, all three have given us some excellent information in reference to some of the challenges faced by African-American youth today. And let's uh, continue that, uh, child, that, that information, Mr. Goldsbury, by uh, looking at uh, some of the things that the NAACP is doing now and has done in reference to making our young people much more aware of the importance of uh, that organization. And of course, Ms. Pritchard will tie into that and she'll make some statements and then we'll end it up by uh, having Pastor Walker and the, in a general sort of round table kind of discussion in reference to this. Well, uh, one thing that I would always have the opportunity to take a look at is getting parents to support our new program. Mm -hmm. Our boards are set up for the individuals uh, from 13 and under to down to five. They become presidents, vice presidents, we learn the Robert Rural Order. They learn to be CPAs. They learn to be uh, treasurer. Uh, they run their own little organization. Our junior division, uh, uh, youth division, they starts out at uh, 19 to 13, and they have their own organization. Uh, thanks to the director of Halley Park, uh, gave us uh, meeting facilities down there where we meet on Saturdays uh, once a month and they run their own uh, organization. This is what we're trying to do, teach the children to be leaders at a younger age mm -hmm. and they will continue to mm -hmm. lead forward. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Pritchard, uh, that's essentially what you're doing in, in reference to uh, uh, being the president of the youth organization in, in Rough. How many members do you have in that organization uh, um, in a real sense? I mean, is we have at least 150 regular t uh, ch youth members, and then we have at least about 30 lifetime members. You mean and you've got 150 young people uh, that come to a youth organization for the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People? I would say, uh, Pastor Walker, that that's an extraordinary uh, number of young people to get together. Uh, concerning such an organization, uh, and, and evidently you're doing a great job, uh, much more than people would give you a credit for, because I, I really would not have thought that uh, it would be that many individuals who would be involved in the uh, youth uh, activities. What about uh, at, at uh, some of the colleges and some of the universities? Are, are you able to reach out to those institutions as well? Yes and no. Um, because of the way that our organization is set up, there's an age um, there's an age limit from each section, the youth and the juniors. Mm -hmm. And because of the age limit, it's 18. Um, it's either 18 or 21. I'm forgetting at the current moment. But because of that age limit, normally the actual university level and the youth level we coincide together, mm -hmm. especially in Nashville, because both Vanderbilt, um, Fisk, and TSU they all have um, they all have either functioning or currently working on making sure that they're properly functioning youth organizations there too and so sometimes we partner together like some of our forums and roundtables in the future will be partnering together as far as facility goes or training goes or just making sure that we know where we're going with things. So. Very good and I think Pastor Walker that, that, that uh, those were some good statements mm -hmm. in reference to uh, getting young people to participate. I think I'm uh, sort of amazed in a real sense that uh, uh, so many young people are actually taking uh, advantage of the uh, National Association for the Advan uh, of, uh, National Association for the Advancement of uh, Colored People. <coughs> Absolutely, Dr. Haney. That not only, <coughs> excuse me, there are a lot of people, young people, that really want to do something positive. But because uh, a lot of times media projects a negative image, uh, you hear it from the radio, television, and the like, of, of our youth, it's, it's so easy to highlight, you know, the negativity of youth. Mm -hmm. You know, a youth, uh, 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 a youth do something that's not right, then it's, it's everywhere. Everybody gets that information. Mm -hmm. But you take an event at the First Amendment Center that took place on a, on a, week, a week or so ago, mm -hmm. then you didn't, where's the news coverage on that? Why? Because there was positive youth gathered together for a positive experience and 
for whatever the reason, that just don't make news. It's mm -hmm. just not good news, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows that when you turn on your news channel, the good news is the bad news. Bad news. Because that's mm -hmm. who people... That's what people are turning on to see. Mm -hmm. But when you got a group of youth that you're consistently working with, mm -hmm. and you bring them up, and you train them up, and you give them a knowledge of themselves, a knowledge of the past, now they can take that knowledge of themselves and the knowledge of their past, and mm -hmm. they can build a, a, a great character, mm -hmm. and they can stand strong. And, and that's a, I think, Dr. Hainer, that's a fear mm -hmm. in America, because.